Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. It is June 17th. Crazy that I have to say that. Um, I can't believe we're already to June. Um, hope you're joining me here. Um, today, I'm gonna be talking about um, some of kind of the, the biggest takeaways or biggest lesson that I've taken from James's training. And it's something that, that he talks about uh, generally in um, the rise of the digital CEO, but we didn't talk about it a bunch on Monday. So I wanted to talk about it more today. So um, if you don't know who I am, I'm not sure why you're here, but I'm Bobby Clink. I'm the founder of, of BobbyClink.com, formerly Your Online Genius. Um, and, and I'm an attorney by training, but I help online entrepreneurs build and protect the businesses of their dreams. That's kind of what I do broadly. And I, I do it with email marketing is one of the things I teach a lot of, but also strategy and then the legal stuff. So I, I'm here today because my coach, James Wedmore, has a training out right now called The Rise of the Digital CEO, which you can get access to absolutely free. It's an eight-part video series that every entrepreneur should watch. Every entrepreneur should be looking at this, thinking about it, et cetera. Sorry, I was grabbing my notes here. And, and um, it's out right now. It'll only be available, I think, until the 25th of this month. So definitely go check it out. You can find it over at bobbyclink.com forward slash rise. Again, bobbyclink.com forward slash rise. You can get access to his training. Now, in the video series, he talks about different gears and different things that you need to build as an online entrepreneur to really kind of get your business humming and in the place you want it to be. And what we're going to talk about today, we're going to focus in on one big piece in, in kind of what I'm going to do is a little bit of training and talking, et cetera. And that's the team piece, building out a team. And if you're sitting here saying, Bobby, I'm just starting out. I can't build a team yet. I want you to stick with me because I'm going to talk about my team, but I'm also going to talk about how you need to start thinking about a team from the beginning and start making the changes to start kind of getting things in place from the beginning. Now, with that, though, um, I'm also going to answer questions. So if you have questions about what I'm talking about, drop them in the comments. Katie Chase, my integrator, who, you know, those of you on my email list, you know, yesterday I said she's better than Magic Johnson. Um, she's there. She's collecting comments for me as kind of questions and takeaways, et cetera. So if you have questions, put them there. I'm going to try to catch them as they happen, but I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm probably not going to catch them as they happen, but Katie is collecting them so I can answer them. But I also, aside from questions about what I'm talking about, I want to hear what your biggest takeaway from the rise of the digital CEO is. I want you to, to tell us what kind of you've taken from it, what you're thinking you're going to change, what you're thinking you need to kind of make better, et cetera. I want you to give me that feedback of what's the biggest takeaway. And so I'll be highlighting some of that, talking about some of that as well. So so you can ask me questions about, you know, uh, what I'm training you about today, about team building, et cetera, about takeaways. If you have other questions, drop them in the comments. And no matter what, say hello. You know, tell us that you're here, you know, just talk so that, you know, I don't feel like I'm talking into the abyss. Um, and, you know, we can have a conversation here. And if you're not catching this live, but you're, you know, catching the replay, you know, drop in that you're watching the replay. Let us know. Um, and if you have questions there, go ahead and put them in because I'm going to try to come back and answer questions in, in the, the comments, etc. So that's what we've got planned for today. Now, with that, I'm going to dive into kind of the biggest thing that I have learned personally from James, and, and there's so many, and there's a bunch of things, you know, we put together a resource page, which had kind of the five big lessons, and a lot of them kind of come together, but when I really think about what's different about my business now versus where it was even a year ago, which is kind of six months into the period or about five months into the period of me really working with James, it's my team. And this has been the revelation for me. This has been kind of the thing that is different that I am, you know, changing in my business and that is actually making things different in my business. So that's why I wanted to talk to you about it. And when you think about the very title of James's video series, The Rise of the Digital CEO, it implies the importance of a team. Right? You can only be the CEO if you have a team. If you don't have a team, you know, you're a solopreneur. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
But what I'll tell you is as long as you're solopreneur, you're going to be struggling and struggling in one of two ways. It could be that you're not making the money you want, but just as important, it's that you're not going to have the time that you actually want. Like that was the big thing for me is I had this realization that, you know, for my family, like I had this thriving business making multiple six figures all by myself with no team. But my family felt like I was never there. I mean, I, I was literally up in my office quite a bit. And when I wasn't, I, I was on this thing. I was literally kind of scrolling through, seeing what do I need to be doing, et cetera. And I was never actually present for my family. And part of it was because I was responding to people who were emailing and saying, hey, I can't get in. I can't log into my membership area. And, you know, just stuff like that. And it was about me, like, responding to, like, emails about little stuff. It was about me doing all of the things in my business. And it wasn't because I was necessarily doing all of this kind of like huge piece of like, you know, moving the business forward. It was the other things. Um, and, um, you know, that kind of really was where I was. Um, I, I was happier than I was before I'd started my online business. But looking back, I was headed for a crash because I was truly burning the candle at both ends and, and not making my family happy. And again, the big thing that, that if you know me, if you've been in my world long enough, one of the things I've always talked about is that like the reason I, I, I said I wanted to stop being a practicing lawyer and start this online business was largely because being a lawyer meant that like I couldn't be there for my family. I, like I was, I missed my daughter's uh, pre-K graduation again. And it's like one of those things that it's like before it was my daughter, I thought those things were silly, right? Okay. Oh yeah. We have graduations for pre-K. We have graduations for K. We have graduations. And I thought that was silly, but I missed that because I was doing something for a case. And this actually happened as I was after I was transitioning. But before I start the year before I really started the transition, my parents wanted to pay from my wife, my daughter, me to go snow skiing with him in March. And I couldn't because I didn't control my own schedule because I was, you know, beholden to judges, opposing counsel, et cetera. And then later that year, they wanted to, to do the same thing, but like have my wife and I come out to the wine country with them. Again, I couldn't do it because I had things where I didn't control my schedule. And candidly, I had this realization that, in working with James that when I started my online business and I kind of made this transition, I was dealing with mindset issues myself. The reason why I was working so hard was I felt a need to prove myself, prove that I wasn't just being selfish and not wanting to work long hours. Because again, if I had gone the traditional route in, in lawyers, like, you know, graduating from Harvard law school with the credentials I had, which by the way, you know, just so you know, I, I kind of talk about this, but I don't talk about it a ton. Like in the second law firm I worked at, my mentor was this guy I call Neil. Um, he was the author of this big Supreme court decision two days ago, Neil Gorsuch. Um, he was one of my first mentors as a lawyer that gives you a sense of kind of where I grew up in the law. So I could have stayed on that path and could have comfortably been making half a million to a million dollars in take home pay for probably the last, I don't know, seven or eight years. And so there was this guilt of me feeling like I needed to do all of these things and, you know, learn all of these different concepts and prove my worth, if you will, prove that, you know, it wasn't selfish for me to have made that decision. And so that was kind of the thing that, that I was doing mentally and it finally clicked and I started building my team last year. My first attempt didn't work. The first person I hired, I had to let go. Um, I had to let go because it just didn't work. We, we weren't a good fit. The work wasn't what I wanted, et cetera. But again, luckily I didn't stop. And so I kept building my team. And now I have this freedom that like I wake up I don't have to look at my own, like, I don't have to look at my, my, my email inbox. I mean, I do, but what happens is I have a team that filters all the stuff and, and I've got two folders I'm supposed to be looking at. Bobby urgent, Bobby non-urgent. That's it. Everything else gets filtered in the right place and customer support requests. Like if it's something that, you know, that's really wanting to talk with me or something, it comes to me. If someone responds to one of my, you know, emails that comes to me, but the random things that I was doing before, I don't even have to worry about. And like, 
candidly, like <laughs> I'm trying to remember, there was something that happened. I guess I sent an email um, or did a live or something. I don't even remember what it was. Oh, we decided to send an email after I think Monday's um, live where we announced the contest that we're running. And, um, you know, I had this thought, oh, I should tell Bobby Joe, who does my community management and, and um, social media, to post something. By the time I even thought that, I looked and she'd already posted it, right? So that's where I am now. And what I want to do um, is I'm going to kind of try to share my screen at this point, And you'll have to give me a second here because I'm, you know, going to... Uh, try to find the way to do this right um, to make sure that I'm doing it. Here we go. I want to share my screen. Um, it, just a second. I'm going to have to do this. It's giving me some difficulty. I should have thought through this in advance, but yes, we'll give it the permission. And uh, uh, okay, we'll do that. So um, hopefully now you guys are seeing my screen here um and if someone can put in the contents it, or comments if you're seeing this um so that i can kind of chat through it and help you understand what this all is so um but what i want to do is kind of walk through my current team but also give you an understanding of how I've built it, why I've built it, all of those things so that you have a sense of kind of how this is all put together. But also like, I'm just gonna honestly tell you about the places where I have to do work these days versus where I don't have to do work. And I think that's an important thing because I think that'll be helpful for you to see and understand um, what I'm doing. Um, so you're seeing my screen, which is good. So this is our current, what we call an accountability chart. And you can think of it as kind of the org chart, but it's not really an org chart, okay? It is, um, it, it's not necessarily about positions, it's about responsibilities and what people are accountable for. And we're using this, this visionary integrator idea. This is from um, Rocket Fuel and Traction and those books and, and those folks. And the concept is that the visionary is the person who has the vision, who sets the goals, sets the overall kind of course of things. The integrator is the person who's responsible for kind of executing that, finding ways to execute it and integrating everything else that's happening in your business. And that's Katie. And so that's where she sits on this thing. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things before I even talk about anything else. Everything under that reports to Katie, not to me. My only direct report as a visionary is Katie. And she's not really a report. Uh, um, I recorded a podcast episode recently. Uh, it'll go live in a couple of weeks where there's this wonderful quote in Rocket Fuel. And it, it's really the, that podcast is about whether you're ready for an integrator because a lot of people say they want an integrator and they don't. Because a visionary and integrator need to think of themselves as partners. You separate the equity, the ownership. But I will say this very simply. And in my email yesterday, I referred to Katie as a co-captain. That's how I view her. I view her as a partner in the business with me, even though she's not an owner as the kind of visionary and the integrator. She is my partner. I talk ideas with her, out with her, et cetera. But more importantly, she has the ability to simply say no to me. And no is a complete sentence. When I have one of my crazy ideas, which I have pretty frequently, she says no and she stops me. So that's been important. Um, but I wanted to clarify that. But then under um, that, I want to you to see how we've broken things up here. We've kind of broken things up into four categories. We have content, which is content creation. We have growth, which you could call sales and marketing. We have fulfillment, which is basically um, the kind of delivery of everything. And then we have admin, which you could call operations. That's the boring stuff. Um, and I say that, I think Katie likes some of the stuff. She likes the tech, she likes the finance, but you know, to me, even the legal, I'm gonna admit it's boring. So, um, and you'll see in each one of those, we've put a person. So you'll see, in addition to being the visionary right now, I am accountable for content. That means I am the one who is responsible for seeing that the podcasts are created, that our courses and coaching content is created, that the weekly emails are created, and that the social media kind of on an ongoing basis is created. But just because I'm accountable for it doesn't mean I do it. Let me talk about what I actually do in um, 
let me talk about kind of what I do in each one of those. So right now in the courses and coaching, I'm still creating. We're trying to get out of that. We are in the process of hiring. You'll see up in the dream team, I have TBD, a content VA. We are hiring a content VA from the Philippines who can help us basically do the first draft. Take the crazy ideas in my head, if I do an outline and, and maybe a video, and can put it into a first draft that I then edit. Okay, so that's what we are going to be doing. Um, but podcasting, again, what happens there, I record, and then Bobby Joe right now is responsible for taking those recordings. She then you know, gets it to our editor. Um, she will get the um, video to Ren, who is our video VA, who, to create the snippets that we've been putting out lately, just those little one-minute short snippets. Um, and then, you know, when it, we get it back from our editor. Bobby Joe is responsible for you know making sure the show notes are right, editing them, making sure everything is done, et cetera, with the podcast. And I'm going to get it wrong. Katie and Bobby Joe could tell you a lot more and a lot better than I am about how it actually works. But from my perspective, that's how it works. Um, so, so, social media, similarly, um, right now, uh, Bobby Joe is responsible for creating that. And... Um, our goal is that she won't very much longer, uh, that she will actually step into more of the fulfillment role and really just, you know, own that 100 percent and not have to dabble in these things. We're not there yet, but eventually that's the plan. But right now, Bobby Joe creates it based on a strategy that we've kind of come up with together and does all of the things. And then the weekly emails, I'm still the one who writes those. So just candidly, if one of them doesn't go out, that's on me. No one else is responsible for that. No one else is doing it. Now, we are getting to the point, and the hope is that if I can get ahead, Christine, and you'll see her listed up on the Dream Team. Let me talk quickly about the Dream Team so you just know who these folks are, um, and then it'll help. So Katie is the Katie Chase, my integrator, but also head of my sales and marketing team. Bobby Joe joined us, I think, midway through January is when she started, and she came on. We were calling her a VA, but basically she was an executive assistant for me and then doing other little tasks. So that's how she came on, but now um, she has – the heart, the personality, everything to be a community manager and customer support. And just so you know, you want to get a customer support answer from her, not from me, because my customer support answers is more likely to be, well, you probably typed it wrong. Type it again. I mean, you know, I, I'm not that mean. <laughs> my customer support tends to be like a one line response, whereas Bobby Joe you know, um, is naturally made to make people feel better and, and to help and be more helpful, et cetera. So she's owning that and community management. Um, you've probably noticed her posting more in, um, you know, in the groups. And she's the one who, you know, if we have something from Team Clink, you can just assume that it's probably Bobby Joe who's posting that. That is her role. Um, so she's stepped into that. And, and part of why she's been able to step into that and, and kind of step away from being my executive assistant is we hired Christine. She is an admin VA. She is in the Philippines. Um, and I had originally hired her, I don't know, three years ago probably when I was dabbling with online marketing as a way to build my law firm. And I hired her through a service um, called Virtual Staff Finder. If you've heard of Chris Ducker, he is an English guy, but I think he lives in the Philippines. He has a service that helps people basically you know, you tell them what they're what you're looking for in a VA in the Philippines, and they will find you three candidates that you then interview and decide. So that's how I originally found her. And then like literally as we were doing some of these other things of hiring, as we were hiring Ren, who is our design and video VA, I saw that Christine was still a connection on Skype. <laughs> and, you know, Katie would say there are some things I do that I give her whiplash in a bad way, but I think this one she would say I gave her whiplash in a good way. I just reached out to Christine. And I said, hey, what are you up to? <laughs> you got some time? And she did. And we brought her on. And so now she has taken over a lot of the executive assistant things. She's the one who handles like organizing my inbox of sorting it all, deciding where it all goes, et cetera. Uh, she is helping out with uh, fixing transcripts. Like we use searchy. So she goes in and kind of edits the transcripts to, to make it better over time. She's helping with loading emails up into the email marketing into Karcher rather than us doing it. Um, and I'm sure like, I don't even know all the things she's doing. But she's taking those tasks off of, um, she's taking those tasks off my plate, off of Katie's plate, and off of Bobby's jo Bobby Joe's plate right now. So in some sense, she's kind of an executive assistant to all three of us. That's the role she's playing. 
than Ren, we went out to hire a video editor. It was literally just to find a video editor. And um, we, we, I tried someone else out. They, they didn't work. And then Rin had applied and we brought her on and she also does graphics. So if you've seen like some of the social media graphics that are adding in the teal and the other colors and that, those are her things. If you look in, in the group where we have the, the Wedmore Wisdom, she created all those graphics. So she is a graphic designer, also a video editor doing all of that for us. Um, and, and so we hired her through onlinejobs.ph, which is think of it as kind of the Indeed for the Philippines. Um, then the TBD is a content VA. We've, um, we're trying a few different people out. Um, we tried one person looks like it didn't really work out. Uh, and then we gave a test assignment to two more people, uh, basically to help us do things like take my videos and take, make them into lessons and then help me create slide decks and all of those things. That's the idea. Uh, and we have a couple of people that we're, um, trying out right now to see kind of how they work. Are they the right person for us? And what I want to give you so that you understand this is, um, you know, Christine, Ren, and the, the content VA, uh, we pay them, I, I don't know exactly what we are, what all of them are being paid, but we're basically talking in the range of six to $8 an hour is what we pay them. And they are grateful for it. And they are, they are loving it and, and trying to do more and more work for us because that is a fantastic wage for them in the Philippines. So as a result of doing that, just think about this for a second, by bringing on Christine, all of a sudden, Bobby Joe doesn't have to spend her time doing the administrative assistant kind of stuff or executive assistant stuff that she originally came in and was doing and can now spend more time doing community management and thinking through things like, you know, higher level customer support issues and how can we maybe come up with those things so she can really step into that role and do it. Katie and I, we were the ones candidly who were still like loading emails in. And that may seem like a little thing. But given the amount of things that we, amount of emails that I send in a regular week, much less a promo period, I mean, we would probably, in a given month, one of us would probably spend, you know, I don't know, probably a day worth of time loading emails up. And if you think about it, that is not work that, that yes, it has to be done, but it's taking away from time that, that Katie or I could be doing other things. And so by having Christine in that role, we're able to do it with content. It's the same thing. It's like, I have all these ideas for doing more content and doing more things, but we only have certain amount of bandwidth. Like one of our goals, um, one, so, so Darcy, I see your question. Literally I'm talking about like, we write our emails in Google docs. And then literally I'm talking about taking that Google doc, the, the copy in the Google doc and putting it into Kartra. I'm talking about literally that level of work is things that we were doing before. Whereas now Christine is doing that for us. And we do it in Google docs, partly so that we can see the whole flow, but also for a bunch of other reasons, but literally just taking that over and, you know, putting it into the Kartra broadcast or sequence or anything like that. Um, which again, part of it is copying and pasting, but just so you know, like, like with Kartra, and I think this is probably true with all of them, you, you have to redo any formatting, you have to put the links in manually. So each email maybe is like, you know, a 10 minute process. But I send a lot of emails. So it's a lot of things that have to be done. So um, that's what it is. And so uh, with the content VA, our hope is that once we have someone here, um, uh, you know, I, once we have someone here, um, like in that role, we'll be able to put out more content. Among other things, we're our, part of our hope and our goal is to maybe like create a written kind of like blog post from our, um, um, our, our Friday podcasts and even our Tuesday podcasts. I'm not sure maybe one or the other. And then also I'm going to start doing something soon and I'm letting you guys in on a secret here. I'm going to start doing something called Bobby Ruins Marketing. That's the working title inside the, the, the badass online marketing group where I'm going to be kind of, you know, doing something. If you've ever seen Adam ruins everything on TV, it's kind of like that. But me taking apart some of the silly things that we see and misconceptions in the online marketing world, I'm going to be doing videos of that. And our hope is that the content VA can then take that, condense it into a written article, et cetera. So that's like what the content VA. And I'm just saying, when we do that, all of a sudden we're able to multiply all of the things that we're doing in addition to, I'll just be honest with you, 
and this is going to seem silly, but like when I create slide decks for my courses, I can't tell you how much time I waste. And I want to say waste how much time I spend on Shutterstock or other places looking for stock images. I should not be doing that. And so the hope is that like, again, once we have this content VA, I'll basically put an outline of the slide deck. I'll, I'll walk through it in like a loom video, send it to them and they'll do it. They'll go and they'll find the video or the, the images. They'll give me that first draft. And then I'm just in the role of editing it and really making it mine rather. So that's kind of um, what I, I'm going to use as that role. Now, what I want to be tell you is something else I want you to notice there is so those three, Christine, Ren, and, and the content VA, those are all Filipino VAs. I want you to understand and look at something very careful there. We did not look for a unicorn. One of the mistakes that a lot of people make when they're trying to say like hire a VA, whether it's in the US or offshore is they're looking for someone who can do everything. They might be there, but they generally won't do a great job at all the things you will be better off finding people who like a different person for each thing. So again, like, like Ren and, and we, we, we made this mistake earlier, Katie and I earlier this year hired someone who the plan was that, that she would be our audio editor for our podcast. And she did a test project. that was great. <laughs> she did the first actual episode we were going to do and made me sound like Darth Vader. I could get into the details of, I'm pretty sure I know what she did. She overmastered, took out all the background noise so that you would literally hear <sighs> like every time I, I breathed, it, but also made me sound very digital. Um, but at first we were also saying, oh, well, the, 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 you know, um, she could also, you know, create our graphics and do all this. And they were just like, she created some graphics and I was looking at, it, I was like, there was stuff that was like off, um, you know, off center <laughs> and not like intentionally. So I was like, you know, and my brother is a graphic designer and I was like, yeah, I, I, I can see that. And it, it drives me nuts. I was like, my brother's mind would be exploding. So I want you to get the sense. You don't want to look for one VA to do it all. You want to be thinking, I'm going to hire an admin VA or I'm going to hire a design VA. Like you shouldn't be in Canva unless you love Canva and are a Canva expert or, you know, content, whatever it is. Um, so, so, uh, by the way, Kitty, I'm seeing your question. Look for virtual staff finder, I believe is the name. Um, or if you just search for like, uh, Chris Ducker, uh, virtual assistant, you'll find it. So that that's where you do it. And, and again, they'll charge you a fee. I don't know what it is now. I think when I hired them way back when they charged me like 500 bucks, I think to vet it. And they gave me three candidates. Um, and I think the way it worked is if, if I didn't like any of them and didn't hire them, they would find me another three. But like, once you hire the first person, then if you want to do it again, you'll have to pay the fee again. But, um, you know, that's one option now. And, and with Christine, that's how we found her. But with Ren, again, and, and this content VA, I want you to also hear something that I just said, or that I said a bit ago, neither one of those was the first person we hired, even for that role, even in this round with the video VA, we originally, you know, gave a test project to someone else to do a video. And like, part of the thing was the person, you know, that person, it was a guy and he, he was asking a bunch of questions, wanting us to identify what we wanted to snip out. And then like, even when he created the video, there weren't a lot of, you know, transitions and um, it, like the vo the video or the audio or not audio, the, the, the music in the background was too loud. And we told him multiple times to turn it down and never did. And so we we're like, okay, well, this is not going to work out because part of it was like, if we have to go through the podcast, figure out what 45 second we want him to snip out and then give him all those instructions, it's adding work to our plate. When you're hiring a VA of any kind, whether it's here in the US or offshore, I want you to be thinking this should be someone who can do the work and take it off my plate without me having to do a lot of management. Now you have to manage them as a person, but my point is you don't want to add work that you have to do to get them to take other work off your plate. And so because of that, that first person we tried to hire didn't work out. So then we, I went back to the applications. Ren was in there and we hired Ren and Ren has been fantastic. I mean, you, hopefully you've seen some of the videos that we've been doing these snippets. She does all of that. If you've seen, um, if you've gone to our resources page for James and seen the video on there where like my logo is in a ne in neon letters on the first, you know, kind of at the beginning, Ren created that. 
So that's what she's doing. And, and again, Katie can drop the, the link if you haven't gone to that page yet, if you want to check that out. I think right now it's bobbyclink.com forward slash BBD. We'll take you to that resource page. Um, but you can see that video if you want to see the kind of work that Ren is doing for us. And that will give you a sense. Now, the content VA, the same thing. We had someone and the first person I was like, oh, man, this is great. Um, it was again, it was a guy who had a like seemed to have a great sense of humor, was making jokes with me and Skype and all that. I was like, ooh, this could be this could be kind of awesome. But then like um, <laughs> we had the, the, the test project back and like I don't even know the best way to explain it, but it was like taking like a lesson that I have about email marketing and like. I don't even say making it into a short story, but it was like, you know, like it, it just, it wasn't right and it wasn't great. And so we're like, okay, this is not going to work out. So we went back and now we have a couple of other people who are doing test projects. Actually, one of them, um, we, I gave the test project last night and I already got an email back this morning with the results, haven't had time to look at it, but we have that. But the point I want you to get is if you go with a service like Chris Duckers, they're going to kind of vet people and, and, and you can make the hire that way. Online jobs is how we're hiring most people now. And what we do, we put out a job application and then we give them a test project. And I just assume that, you know, the test project, the first person isn't going to do a great job. And that's okay. I view that as like, you know, I'm going to make a test. And again, on these things, we're often saying spend no more than five or no more than 10 hours on the project. So it's like, okay, if I'm paying them seven bucks an hour, 10, 10 hour maximum, okay. I spent 70 bucks to find out if this person is a good fit. I'm willing to make that investment every day because it saves me time. And um, we'll talk about this a bit more um, tomorrow. Uh, if you join me live tomorrow, I have a big announcement, but we're also going to preview uh, our BBD bonuses for people who are thinking about signing up for James's program. And one of them is going to be really to walk you through in detail how to actually do this process. Um, that's all I'll say for now. But um, what I'm saying is what we do is we don't spend a bunch of time on the front end. We spend minimal amounts of time to, to find potential people, give them a test project. And if it works out, great. If it doesn't, we move on to the next person. And the reason we're doing that is all of these things, when you're hiring a VA, is about saving you time. And um, what you don't want to do with a VA is spend a week reviewing 200 applications, interviewing 20 people, then only then giving them a test project to see is this person good. That is not the way to do it because what you're thinking is you're gonna find the perfect VA. You're not going to. You're not gonna find the perfect anything in life. I just, you know, spoiler alert there. Um, and so what I want you to know is you want to do things in a way that you can test someone out, you can see if they work and then decide and you just do this and you know, it, it makes the process seamless. So that's the dream team. I went on a long time about that longer than I meant to. Um, but I wanted to give you a sense of who I'm talking about in various places. So, um, now, like, let me move out of the content section. I think I've talked about that. And just so you know, you know, Katie and I will be meeting the beginning of Q3, like for a couple, first couple of days of July to talk about planning for Q3. And part of that is going to be talking through what is our vision for kind of the next person we're going to hire. And I'm not sure exactly who that is. We'll, we'll, I'll tell you kind of candidly, I think we'll be thinking between two people. Either we're going to try to find someone to replace, like not right away, but that we hope could replace me as accountable for content over the long term, which would mean basically bringing in maybe a social media manager or a content manager or something like that. Um, or we're going to look to hiring an assistant for Katie. And I'm not saying we're making these hires now. We are not. But we want to have a vision for when what our next hire is, what we're thinking, because that affects things. That affects the training we pour into people. That affects kind of these different things. So um, that's where we will, you know, probably go. Um, but what I want you to get is like when I'm sitting here in, in my content role, I shouldn't be doing that long term. That's not a good plan. But actually, before I move off content, I want to show you something. Um, you'll see there's this lineup for me in this box of content going up to Katie. And that's an important thing because I want you to understand that when I am in my role as the head of content, Katie is my boss. And I mean that 100%. Um, now, again, there's some difficulty with it, right? Because she obviously knows she can't actually fire me. But 
I want her to tell me things and, you know, I should be thinking of her as my boss and I'm working on that. And so like that would mean, for example, she wants me to write my weekly emails further in advance and get drafts put together. And that's one of the places where I'm falling down in my role and I need to get better at that. But in my role in creating content and the head of the content team, I answer to Katie. So I want that absolutely clear. And when you're thinking about building a team, that's how you're going to need to think about this. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a growth team. Growth team. This for most of us is in, in many ways, um, the most important department in our business, because we are online marketers. So we are marketing. Um, Katie is, it runs promotions. She's in charge of leads, kind of bringing in leads and creating funnels to, to do things with those leads with affiliate promotion. So for example, where, you know, she is, she was the one who, who put together the plan for our BBD promotion. Okay. Because we're an affiliate. So she created that and I do it. Um, um, you know, I basically said, you tell me what to do when you want me to show up. She came up with all these ideas. Again, she came to me and talked about it, but it was her her responsibility, her job, and she had the ability and the freedom to do that. Then um, also she is in charge with uh, doing social media relating to promotions. And you'll notice I, I separate promo social media from standard social media because it serves a different purpose. But in her role as the head of the growth team, she's responsible for working with whoever is creating our social, which right now is Bobby Joe, to get the social media that she wants created for the promotions. That is Katie's responsibility. Katie is, is in charge of that. Um, Facebook ads, we have Arfon. Um, those of you who are in my Fans First Society or, or who did Massive Action May, hopefully you, you were there for the training Arfon did. He does the work for us, but Katie is the one. And this is a place where she still brings me in because I understand Facebook ads more than she does. But long term, what I've explained to her is my goal is that, you know, Arfon is basically doing the strategy and Katie is simply responsible saying, hey, you know, here are our key performance indicators. We want leads below this cost long term. We want, um, you know, we want, um, you know, uh, sign ups for promotions at this price, whatever it is, that's what she'll be responsible for doing and just kind of managing Arfon or, you know, whatever and kind of managing that role. And then affiliate cr recruitment, we have affiliates who can promote our pro programs and our products. So uh, Katie is responsible for that. Now, if you look at that, you realize she's the one who makes the money for the business. Um, so obviously she fits a very important role. Um, and this, a lot of people condense the content with growth. So a lot of people would put the podcast, the social media and weekly emails into the growth team. One of the things that I believe is that content is a standalone department. And the reason why is because content comes into play in promotions and marketing, but also in the actual fulfillment, like actually delivering the product. And so my view is I want the content team. I want someone in charge of content who is responsible for making sure that we have consistent messaging, consistent themes, consistent feel everywhere from our, um, you know, our free content and the podcast and my Facebook lives, et cetera, all the way through our paid content. So that's why I broke it apart into a separate thing rather than having content creation in multiple places. So that's why we put it there. Um, so then we've got Bobby Joe, who, like I said, she handles community management, customer support, and then product delivery. And right now, obviously on product delivery, largely it's me, but for example, with badass email marketing, as we were doing, uh, and creating the content for badass email marketing, she was the one who was responsible for creating the membership side and kind of creating the pages and doing all that, um, and, and things like that. But more importantly, she's the one who makes sure I show up when I'm supposed to show up. Like if it weren't for Bobby Joe, Bobby Clink would, I don't want to say ghost you, but I'd forget about things. <laughs> and Bobby Joe does that. So like posting things like, you know, reminders for Q and A's, like putting things in different groups where we're collecting questions. That's all Bobby Joe. And so it's that and community management, building our community, the free and the paid communities, and then customer support is her role. Then admin, I won't bore you with because that's, you know, Katie's responsible, but you can probably imagine like legal, I'm actually responsible under her in the admin section, but Katie does that. So that's kind of the thing. But what I want you to get a sense of is for, for, for growth and promotions, I show up as the puppet in a way, like Katie tells me what to do and I show up. Katie tells me, for example, hey, we need to write these emails. And so she and I work on it. 
uh, we'll work on emails together. Sometimes she does a first draft and I do it. Sometimes I do it. Um, you know, it really depends on those. But in promo, she tells me what she needs and I come in and I fill that role like I'm doing here doing this training. But she's responsible for it. And, and I'm not going to meddle. I don't mess with funnels unless she tells me to. I don't, you know, uh, and I used to, but now I don't go live for a promotion unless she tells me to. Or we talk about it, we decide, yeah, it's a good idea. Like, I would not do that because that is her role and that is her area of accountability and I want her to have control of that. So I'm doing that. Now, this is my team and I'm going to go back to, to the camera for a second. And what I want you to get from that is there are a lot of different roles in my business, but so, I mean, in some sense now, I guess I have a team of, of six people and, and, and maybe Arfon would be seven if we're counting Arfon as kind of a contractor, but we have, we have a team, but three of them are VAs um, in the Philippines who are helping us with the doing tasks. And what I want to suggest to you is if you're just starting out, that's where you need to start. You need to start by figuring out what are the things that are taking a good bit of your time, but aren't actually like high leverage activity. It's probably going to be the VA to do those things for you because that will free up again. Even if you only say five hours a week, which by the way, you know, these days you could easily get someone at five hours a week, six to $7 an hour. So for you know 30 to $35 a week, you could get someone to free up five or more hours of your time. And actually they'll probably free up more than five hours of your time because they will be better at it than you are. Like literally, you know, I'm not good at those things because I don't really enjoy it. So my team can do it much more quickly than I can. Like customer support would take me much longer than Bobby Joe, even though Bobby Joe's, you know, not an outsourced VA, but I'm saying, I want you to get that sense. So what if you could free up five hours of your time to do the highest impact work in your business, whether that's creating your course that you've been sitting, sitting on, haven't done, creating a membership that you haven't done, going live on Facebook to actually build connections, building communities, um, planning in your business. I mean, you could do that for about 30 to 35 bucks a week. You could free up those five hours every week in your business. And that's the power of starting to build your team. And I wanted to give you guys that sense that that is possible because a lot of us like, and I was the same way. I was like, oh man, you know, hiring, I can't afford to hire. It's going to be too expensive. And I was thinking in all of these terms and, um, I was shooting myself in the foot by having that attitude, by having that viewpoint, because I was operating from a perspective of, of lack, if you will, of not being able to. Um, and so as a result, I was doing things. I was having to find and do the work myself and actually um, kind of, you know, do it all myself rather than having someone else, which would mean that I could actually focus on the things that mattered. And so, um, that's a mistake and I want to get you guys out of that mistake if you're doing it. Now, as you build your team, you're going to need to build bigger pieces. You're going to need to, you know, ultimately bring in strategy people. Um, because if, if, if all you have are doers, people who do tasks for you, you're still going to be mentally overburdened because you have to think through all the high level strategy and you shouldn't be doing that. Um, but it's a process. And so I simply want to stress this to you. And, and again, part of the reason I'm doing this is like literally someone, um, you know, and, and, and I think she's here. I, I saw her comment earlier and I'm, I'm not going to, um, you know, I'm not going to highlight her and name her, but if she's still here, she'll know what I'm talking about. Responded to my email announcing this by saying she wasn't sure that she could, um, she wasn't sure that, that she could afford to outsource. She really needs to outsource and get some things off because she is burned out, but she wasn't sure that she could afford to outsource. And then also whether it's sign up for James's program or something else. And I'm not going to pitch you hard on James's program right now. I'm not going to pitch you on, um, uh, on, uh, you know, BBD. I think it's a great program, but I'm not going to pitch it to you right now at this moment. But what I want to tell you is that first of all, I think that was kind of, a, a coming from a perspective of thinking through 
I can't do this because, and thinking that outsourcing is too expensive. And so part of what I want to do is talk to you about this process of bringing in an admin VA. And again, I just want to walk through a couple of things here. What if you didn't have to go through your inbox? Your inbox was sorted for you. What if you didn't have to, you know, load up emails or futz around building pages on whatever page builder you meant? Like you could just tell people, here's the content I want, go build it. And they built it for you. Um, what if all of those things could be done for you? That's work that can be done for six to seven dollars an hour. So again, you could free up five hours of your life each week for 35 bucks, 30 to 35 bucks. And if you're doing a lot of design work, spending time in Canva and messing around with that, you could hire someone else to do that and, and do another five hours. And all of a sudden you're talking about like 30 to $60 in a week, like 60 bucks a week, you could free up 10 hours of your time to do the work that will actually generate the revenue. And in, in our case, that's like, we are gonna redo, and, and I say we, largely Katie's responsible for this and is gonna rope me into where she wants my help, redoing our front end funnels which we know that if we redo our funnels the right way, we can start generating more money. But again, we haven't been able to even up to this point because we are trying to kind of up our, you know, potential for doing the admin work and things like that. And as we do that, Katie and I will have more time. And when Katie and I have more time, we can do more of the high impact work that actually makes a big difference and actually brings in more money. Um, and, and, and James has this saying, he says, you know, the reason you can't afford the reason you believe you can't afford to hire someone is because you haven't hired someone yet. <laughs> it's really counterintuitive. It's weird. Um, and it's one of those things that I'm telling you, it's true. Until you hire someone to do that stuff for you, you're like, oh man, I can't, I, I, I don't want to spend money. But the second you do, you're like, oh, now I can do more of the most important work. And, and I did a I don't even, I, I did a training in my fans first society, I think at some point called about your 4% work, which is about this idea of the fractal nature of the 80, 20 rule. And the, the concept is that 4% of your work, 4% of your effort, 4% of everything you're doing in your business right now is responsible for 64% of your results. Think about that for a second, 4%. So in an average week, that means less than two hours. If, if you actually did 40 hour weeks, but let's just say you did 50 hour weeks, two hours, of your effort is 64% of your results. What if you actually took 10 hours of, of other stuff off your plate and did 10 more hours of that kind of work? Imagine what that could do for your role, the results. Now, I'm not going to say that it's going to mean, you know, you're going to have like, you know, six times the results. You're not. That, that's not the way it works, but it is the way that you can start to have kind of the ball rolling and really start to have the big impacts in the world. So that's my, my, my kind of big recommendation and the point I want you taking from this training. Uh, and now I'm gonna go to the, the Google Doc. And if people have comments, keep them coming in or questions, et cetera. So first, um, Catherine had a takeaway that so far what she's taken from James's course is that there really aren't rules. <laughs> Uh, I can do what works for me. The Ascension model kind of flipped what I thought on its head. I thought I had to follow the format of free content, one-on-one -on -one service, then do scalable digital course. I've been stuck on a number two with a full-time job burning myself at both ends. Well, um, I agree. There are no rules. That's one of the things that, that, that I like um, that he gets across to you. Um, one of the things that James really taught me is, and he's got a lot of things about like, and one of the lessons on my resource page for him, one of the things I said is that, I don't know if I said it's okay to be a rebel or you can be a rebel or something like that, but you know, he has this podcast episode. <laughs> that it is so me. It's why smart goals are stupid. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's so me because it's something I would say, like I would say smart goals are stupid. Um, but it's also because, for example, you know, he, he, he says the exact same thing I do, that, that realistic and attainable, that's dumb. We shouldn't set realistic and attainable goals. You've heard me rant about that forever. But the, the concept here I really want you to get is there is no one size fits all. And that's one of the things that I hope everyone is getting from James's is course here or, or his program. And again, if you haven't, you really need to go watch it. Go to bobbyclink.com forward slash rise. Watch the rise of the digital CEO. This is one of the things that's different about James versus most of the people we follow online. 
most of the people we follow on online say, this is the way I do it and you have to do it this way. And, and again, they don't use that language, but basically that's what they're saying. They're saying there's one way to do it and I'm going to show you what that is. James doesn't tell you that. Now, there are certain things that he believes very strongly, like he believes very strongly in, in outsourcing and building a team. Um, but I would also tell you, I haven't necessarily built my team the way that he suggests. And I'm going to, I'm going to brag on Katie here for a second. One of these things is Katie. Like James has this concept that, that you should use what he calls the mailroom strategy, which is you should generally hire people for like customer support or executive assistant role. That's where you should hire and you should let them kind of come up through the ranks. So that's how his integrator, Jilly, she, she was in, I think she was actually initially his wife's executive assistant and then his executive assistant. And then she was promoted up. I didn't do that with Katie. Now, Katie started as a project manager for me outside and then an online business manager for me as um, a, a contractor, but I hired her straight in as an integrator. That's not what James teaches. But I'm also gonna tell you this, and this is where I'm bragging on Katie. Um, at, at our retreat earlier this year in James Mastermind, there was a day before the main retreat called Integrator Day where we could bring our integrator with us and they were doing training, et cetera. And I brought Katie and James made a point of pulling me aside and saying that um, that Katie was pretty amazing and that um, I should hold on to her. And so I share that so you know that like, even though I hired Katie in a really, like not the way he teaches, he was happy that I did it because he's more interested in, in me doing what's right for me than about me following some you know script exactly how, how he teaches it. And so he's not going to tell you, you have to create an online course or you have to create a membership or you have to create a group coaching. He's going to tell you, you have to have one great offer to start. And then over time, you want to build an Ascension model and you can create that however you want it to look. And like, he's not going to get mad at me because for example, I want my higher level offers to be more of me kind of working like directly with people. Like with my inner circle, a kind of group coaching slash mastermind group, um, I'm doing something really crazy. Like we are meeting every single week going forward in July. And, and I say that there will be weeks where I can't because of travel. But like a lot of people like, you know, who are setting up those groups, like we're going to meet once a week, once a month. And that's it. And I said, no, no. I mean, to me, the way I can provide the most value is, is with meeting with people more frequently. And that fits my personality. Most of you know. I am someone who naturally wants to connect with people, wants to build connections. And so James doesn't give me trouble for that. But heck, James was the one, James and his mastermind were, were the group that, that gave me the thought that I didn't have to do any launch at all for my template library. Like I was in this mode of, oh, you got to launch with a webinar. And so I'm doing webinars. And then I do my first webinar last January, January, 2019. And it worked fine. I mean, I, I made money, et cetera. But, you know, and I came to the mastermind retreat that year and, and said, hey, you know, like was talking through basically how, how do I make my webinar better next time? Or how do I make the results of my webinar launch the, better the next time? And they said, well, why are you assuming you have to do a webinar? <laughs> and they were the ones who gave me this notion of doing what I became my non-launch launch, email only launch last year, which became kind of my thing. Again, because James gave me permission that you don't have to follow any set of rules. You have to design a business to suit you, your business, your desires, and what you want. So Catherine, I am glad that that was your takeaway because that is one of the most powerful takeaways that James will like, you know, James teaches throughout and I want everyone to have that. So that was it. Um, then Darcy asked a question regarding the rocket fuel uh, visionary integrator quizzes. Now, if you haven't yet, like you don't need to, to buy this, but when you are building your business and you're thinking about bringing in a Katie, bringing in an integrator, you, you got to read this book. Don't even think about hiring an integrator without having read this book. Now, I listened to this book. Um, but Katie and I read it again and like together recently and you know, it, it's great. And there's a quiz in here. So you have it. Um, and, and there's a quiz that lets you decide whether you're a visionary or an integrator. And I think they have a link to it as well. And Darcy said, I was slightly more visionary, but very high integrator too. Um, maybe that's why it is hard to let go. Anyone else? Um, <laughs> no, Darcy, that's not why it's hard to let go. Um, now, I mean, maybe that's part of it, but it's hard for all of us to let go. I'm going to tell you that, um, and again, here's something, and, and I'm 
doing a spoiler, I guess, for um, my podcast that I recorded yesterday, which will come out in a couple of weeks. Um, to bring in like an integrator, okay, um, you have to be comfortable with someone else knowing more about your business than you do. And that is really hard for most people. Like I'm sitting, sitting here today, I can tell you, Katie knows more about what's going on in my business than I do. Because she's the one who's, she's talking with, with, with uh, Bobby Joe, with me, with Ren, with Christine. She's having conversations with everyone, keeping her pulse on everything that's happening in my business. I'm not. You got to be willing to do that. But also letting go is hard. Um, and like I had this realization, like I actually went through a group coaching program on building your team. Um, and what I'll tell you is like, I saw it in other people there and, and I don't even know how I was able to do it, but eventually just the flip switched in my brain and I had this realization. The problem is we are all worried because we've built a business that is our baby is how we look at it. We look at it as this is something that we have built from the ground up and man, am I going to really let someone else step in and do this for me? What if they don't do it right? What if they mess something up? We all had that thought. I mean, that's why I didn't hire people. And, and again, I had other things. Like I'll tell you, like um, part of my issue, why I didn't hire for so long in my business, like even last year in the mastermind, I knew at the beginning of last year, I needed to start building my team. It was one of my commitments at the first mastermind retreat. I came to the next one in June and I still hadn't done it. Um, and I made excuses and all this. And, you know, then some questions really, you know, um, helped me realize part of what was going on for me was guilt because I'd had to, in my law firm days, there was an associate attorney who came in who was doing a great job. But as I transitioned into building my online business, I had to let her go because I just didn't have work for her. Nothing that she had done wrong. And there was guilt. I had guilt about that because, you know, I will never forget that conversation. It was one of the hardest conversations I ever had to have. She cried. You know, I was, you know, doing my best not to cry. I don't know if I did or didn't. Um, but it was gut wrenching to have that conversation. And James helped me see like last at our mastermind retreat last June, he asked me a couple of questions. He said, well, do you think that the, the, the two years that she spent working for you, do you think she learned a lot? I said, well, yeah, definitely. And he said, do you think she is happy to have worked for you? I said, well, no doubt. She sent me notes afterwards. She sent me emails saying I was the best boss she ever had. And it was a great way to start. And he said, then why are you focusing just on the end? And so literally that little thing switched something for me. So that's the kind of thing that, that helped me get over it. But with me, it was guilt. So if you're not hiring, that could be part of what's going on, but it could be letting go. And letting go is a big piece, but it was funny in this, um, team building group coaching program I was in, there was this woman who was micromanaging everyone on her team, like the customer support and like literally would be mad at her customer support person because the customer support person answered a question differently than she would have answered it. And I, I to say, I have no idea if it was better or worse, but differently. Well, you know, at some point, um, and I kind of helped along with the person who was leading this because we had this was later on in the process was you have to ask yourself this question. First of all, differently is not necessarily worse. Differently is just different. Different might be better. Like, again, once I brought, um, you know, had people doing customer support on my team, I realized, holy crap, they're doing it differently. And they're a lot better at this than me. My customers are almost certainly feeling more supported than me than when I was doing it. Not to mention that they get a response quicker than when I was doing it. Because when I was doing it, I would have backlog and it wouldn't get done. But here's the other thing I want you to think about. For these kinds of tasks, especially for like some of these other tasks, I want you to recognize that none of it is going to crash your business. Like I've told Bobby Joe and I've told Katie, I want them to make mistakes. Um, I want them to screw things up. Because nothing they could possibly screw up is going to bankrupt me. Uh, now, again, I wouldn't let Katie go, like, take a loan on behalf of the business, but she can't do that anyway. <laughs> but I'm not going to, you know, let them do things that could really, you know, tank the business. But nothing will. And I want them to make mistakes because making mistakes is how they're going to learn better than me, like, trying to tell them something. And, and again, we all make mistakes. Not just, it's not because they're going to make mistakes and I didn't. I make mistakes all the time. And I learn from them. And so I want them to make mistakes. So that's part of it. And then the other piece, I want you to get this, like 
if you're holding on to everything, and again, let's just take customer support. Like, I don't know how much time you're dealing with it, but if I was spending five hours a week doing customer support before, and I was probably spending more than that, I, I don't know, Bobby Joe might have an idea of how much, you know, she and, and um, like she and, and um, Christine are spending on it these days. Um, but let's say I was spending five hours. Now, let's say that hiring it out would mean it was only done 80%, like a B minus level work, and I was doing A plus work. Let's just assume that, which is not an accurate assumption, but that's how a lot of us view it. Let's just assume that that was the case. Do we really think that me having the five hours back in my life to do the high leverage work and let's say have customer support go from A plus to B minus work, which one of those is going to move my business forward more? Me continuing to have customer support at A plus level or me having five hours to work on high leverage work? Answer is pretty simple. Me getting out of the customer support and doing the high level, you know, high leverage work that only I can do is way more important than any small amount of kind of downgrade in quality. And I tell you that, so I want you to do that thought experiment. Again, I want to be very clear so that there is no, dis no confusion here. My customer support probably went from a B minus to an A plus as a result of me not doing it. And for a lot of us, that's going to be true also. Um, you know, unless you are fantastic at creating designs, having someone else do the designs will mean you will have better design and you'll have more time to do the high leverage work. Having someone else, you know, build your funnels. They are probably going to be better at building your funnels than you are, unless you are a funnel builder. Like unless you really love building, you know, email funnels and all that stuff, chances are that you can get someone else. If that's really what they specialize they, on, they can do better. Or writing a blog post. I could never write an SEO rich blog post because I don't have the patience. Let me just tell you that. So my content VA, hopefully, will actually be able to take the stuff I do and add this level of SEO quality to it that I wouldn't think about. So a lot of times we think, we have this story in our minds that by letting go, things will get worse, when in reality, by letting go, things will get better. Literally, that exact task will get better, but also you then are freed up to do the other stuff, the stuff that makes a bigger difference. And, and Darcy, because I know what you're working on, like you have would have time to really focus on your runway for your upcoming launch and really spend the time building the connections, doing all of that stuff that only you can do. So um, I know a lot of us have this issue, um, but it's not because you're an integrator. It's because your business is your baby. And we all think of it that way. That's how we think of it. And so... Um, what I'll say is it's actually harder to let go the longer you wait to let go. So for me, it was harder to let go, I think, than for a lot of people because I didn't really start letting go until a year and a half after I'd really started having some success. Um, and also, I'm just going to tell you, like, you know, I, I had all of these beliefs and I had all of these things. And eventually, like, I got over it. And like I said, for me, it was hard. And then eventually the, 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 the flip, the switch flipped. I always say that wrong. The switch flipped. And now I think Katie would say, Katie would tell you, I mean, I'm the opposite. I'm like, I don't want to do it. She, she'll ask me my preference on a graphic. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> um, because I recognize it's literally just um, my preference. And who knows? So I let that go. Now, Linnell said, I don't understand why the visionary is not responsible for the content. Why is it not the visionary's idea as to what the content is? Or are you saying the visionary should not be responsible for delivering content? Um, this is a great question. And, and this is something that I think a lot of people, this is one of the last things that people are, are, are comfortable letting go. Um, and, and it's been true of me. Like I was, you know, comfortable to let a lot of things go. But content is one that's been like um, kind of a constant thing that I've been like, oh, mm, uh, uh, you know, it, it hasn't been easy for me. Um, but what I'll tell you is that over time, like it, it's about resources. And 
What I mean by that is eventually you're going to have the same things you're talking about all the time. You're going to have the same things that, 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 that are your messages, et cetera. And do you have to be the one who writes the blog post? No. Now, again, I will probably like, I don't know if I will ever get to the point that, that I let go of like outlining my, blog, uh, my, my podcasts. I don't know. I mean, maybe I could let that go, but I'll just be honest with you. Most of them, you know, I mean, I mean, I don't have, I could dig through my, uh, my recycle and find an example, but I mean, my outlines for my podcast are, are written with a Sharpie on two pieces of legal paper. I mean, that's the extent of my outlines because I'm always just going to talk about around the big points. So that, you know, I don't know if that will ever be let go of, but I don't need to be the one creating a slide deck in the first instance. I could outline, I could say, here are the points we want to make. Here are the concepts we want to get across. Um, here are these things and kind of talk to her and say, Hey, I think maybe we should have this here and that, and someone could go create it instead of me, for example, spending a whole day creating a slide deck. Why do I spend a whole day creating a slide deck? But a lot of us do that. Blog posts again, um, for example, if I decided, Hey, you know, I want to create a blog post about the five biggest email mis people, five biggest mistakes people are making with email marketing. And I could say, here are those five mistakes. Can you go create a first draft of that? Right now? I'm not saying that you're going to stop having a role in content, but what I'll tell you is that and again, it depends on what your view of content is. Some people love creating content. And so if you're one of those people, you're going to always keep more of a role. Like with me, I don't know that I will give up writing my weekly emails anytime soon. I'll just be honest with you. Because I believe that is one of um, the most important piece of me building a connection with you uh, as an audience. But I could tell you that, you know... Um, I'm not someone who necessarily believes that every written thing coming out of me needs to be created by me. I'll just tell you that, that the workbooks for uh, badass email marketing, Linnell, cause I know you're in there. I mean, um, those were created by my team using my slides and using the information and they created a way better workbook than I ever would have created. And it's the same thing with, you know, we, we were doing workshops uh, with, with workbooks for a while. I mean, those workbooks created by my team. Um, because they can do it better than I can. I can give direction. Um, and that's obviously in, in the vision and in the, the coming up with those kinds of things. Like, you know, I'm the one who's still as the visionary driving the, the key ideas, the, the fans framework, um, the concept of like the email journey and, and, and how it goes. And we're coming up with a new, uh, framework that, that, I'm going to be, I'm, we're still kind of ruminating on it and making sure we're comfortable with it. But you know, that it's about, you know, the key pieces of making, you know, sales easy. And it's, it's something that really, in my view, applies to email marketing and everything else you do in marketing. And, and we're going to do that. I came up with that. Right. But what I want to get you get through is I only have time to come up with those ideas because I delegate the execution of other things. And so by delegating the execution, the creation of a slide deck, for example, or the creation of, you know, a first draft of uh, a blog post, if we start doing blogs or someone creating my show notes or those kinds of things, that's what gives us the freedom to actually have the ideas, to set the vision, to see, okay, what are my big ideas? How am I going to position myself in the market? How am I going to show up and be me? That's the kind of stuff that, um, that you need to do. And again, I just want to be clear, like we're doing this, this, this content VA, we're going to, um, you know, one of the things I want the content VA to do is to help me create slide decks. Like literally I will create a Google doc outline, give it to the, the, the content VA and they will give me that first draft now. And just side note, Ren, our design VA create is creating a, uh, Google slides template that we will use going forward. Um, so literally the, the, the content VA will take that template and take the content, find the, find the right images, do all of that work and give it to me so that instead of, instead of spending a whole day on it, I maybe spend an hour tweaking, making it better, Bobby icing it, if you will. But it's not like they're coming up with the ideas. They're taking my ideas and, and putting it to work. Um, that is the role. 
And that's why it's different. Um, and I'm just going to tell you, like, as you go higher and higher up, um, and look at other gurus, I will just tell you, they are not the ones creating their social media content. They are not the ones, um, you know, creating their, their written blog posts. Many of them, if they have podcasts, you know, they get an outline from someone else, you know, on their team who creates an outline of the content that they're going to cover in their podcast when it's not an interview show. It's the reality. And this is one of the hardest things to grasp for a lot of us when we're starting out. Uh, and that's a place where letting go of that can be hard and you do it in stages. You're not like just handing over the keys to the castle and, and letting someone create blog posts, which they put up without you reviewing that you're not doing, but over time, you know, people will do it. And I'll just tell you just, and not, I don't know if she's done any weekly. I don't think she's done any weekly emails, but Katie has written some of the promo emails that have been sent over the, let's say the last two months um, with only minimal edits from me. And what I'm going to tell you is you wouldn't be able to guess which is which because um, she has captured my style. She knows how I write um, and she's able to do that. And I'm saying you can find that too in a content person. Eventually it takes work. It's not a, it's not a short term process, but our goal, just to give you a sense with the content VA is to to get us like 75 or 80 percent of the way there. And then I take it the last 20 percent rather than me having to do all of it. So that's the goal. So um, those are the only questions or takeaways that, that Katie put in a, a sheet for me. I'm going to assume she captured them all. If she didn't, blame Katie, not me. I should have worn my... Katie actually... <laughs> those of you in my community have seen that Katie has a shirt that says hashtag blame Bobby. Funny enough, she actually bought me a shirt that says hashtag blame Katie. I should have worn that today. That would have been a, a perfect shirt uh, in case she missed anything. Um, but I just wanted to do this to help you guys understand that there really is a way uh, to build your team. And when, especially when you're starting out, what I want you thinking of is how do I hire someone who frees up all my time? Um, how do I find, and not all my time, but frees up time, not someone who creates more work for me, but literally just takes things off my plate. That's where you start. And when you do that, it, it, it will really make it possible for you to do the deeper, more impactful work. And, um, this is why ultimately having a team, this is why, you know, James has, that's one of the gears. It just has to be one of the gears for your system. Um, it's the thing that eventually will allow you to take vacations and not take a phone, not take your computer, not spend the, the vacation time working. And so I want to encourage you that you need to be thinking about that. You need to be thinking about building a team that will help you do that. Start with baby steps and then over time, grow your team. That's going to be the best way to go. So that's it. Um, if you haven't checked out Rise of the Digital CEO yet, I can't believe you haven't, but go do that. Go to bobbyclink.com forward slash rise um, and um, definitely check that out. Also, I will be back here tomorrow. I, I think it's again at 11 Eastern time with a big announcement of something that we've got planned that we're going to be doing. That's going to be fun. And then I'm also going to be previewing uh, my uh, the bonuses we will have uh, if people sign up for James's BBD through my affiliate link. So that's what I got tomorrow, but I'm around and I look forward to chatting. Talk to you later.